In the last video, we defined what simple harmonic motion is in terms of an object that experiences a restoring force. In other words, a force that is directed in the opposite direction of the uh, displacement. Okay, that was Hooke's law or the spring force that you saw. So here we're going to actually describe the motion. This is going to be like the kinematics of simple harmonic motion. Since it is cyclic motion, we're going to be dealing with trigonometric functions. All right. Uh, this chapter, I want you right now set your calculators to radian mode. All right. It's a big thing uh, you need to be aware of when we're dealing with this chapter. Okay. So set calculators to radian mode. The reason is. We deal with the phase okay, of the motion. In other words, how far it's passed through the cycle, or how many radians it is passed through the unit circle. So we have an example here, uh, you saw in the very first video on oscillations, of a mass on a spring, and it's got a little marker on the end of it. Okay? And that mass of the spring is just moving up and down, exactly as it was in our video. But what we're doing is we're having a piece of paper moving along okay, at constant velocity. And what we're getting is a trace of that object's position, that mass's position, over time. So what we have is a couple of different uh, functions that it could trace out. And it all depends on what the initial conditions are. In the first graph we have, the initial condition is that it starts at the mean position, or the equilibrium position. Okay. This is the initial condition. When that is the initial condition, the function that's going to describe the displacement will look like the following. x equals x naught, which is the amplitude, times the sine of omega t. Okay? Now the reason that we're using omega t here, what that ends up giving us, omega t times t is going to be equal to theta. And theta is just the phase angle. This is how far through the cycle the object has moved and we're going to give that the unit all right it's going to be in radians which is why we need to be in radian mode remember this is just the angular frequency so this is radians per second we don't write the radians, of course, by including it there. Times seconds. Seconds cancel out, and we're left with the angle there and radians. So, if we don't start out at the mean position when we're plotting our displacement, and instead we start out at the amplitude, a different initial condition, so the second graph starts at the amplitude, or the maximum displacement, our function is going to follow x equals x naught times cosine omega t. And the reason for that, at the amplitude, cosine of um, zero, all right, time equals zero, is equal to one. And the first one, sine of zero, is equal to zero. Okay, so you would want your initial condition for the first graph to be x equals zero. Here, you want your the second graph. You want your initial condition to be x equals the displacement, or the pardon me, the amplitude, the largest displacement you can have. All right, so that's just to get us started. These are the trig functions that we'll be using, and we're going to use them also for velocity and acceleration. But just to get us started, uh, there they are for position. Now we're going to come back to this description, all right, at the bottom there on the period of simple harmonic motion for mass on the spring system. There's something else that I would like to cover first. So let's do a quick example, all right. Um, you have that graph there of some object's displacement versus time. It is, it is an example of simple harmonic motion. So for the first part, the question is, what is the amplitude? So x naught is equal to, look for the maximum displacement, 0 0.080 meters. Next question asks, all right, what's the frequency, uh, period frequency and angular frequency of the system? Well, we look for the time over which the function would start to repeat. And after four seconds, we would see that that function would start to repeat, OK, and continuing that type of motion. So we know the period is four seconds. Frequency is just the inverse of the period, so it's going to be equal to 0.25 hertz. In other words, one quarter of a cycle is completed every second. And the angular frequency, right, which we defined in the last video, is just 
2 pi times the frequency, all right? Or in other words, this tells us that we have approximately 1.6 radians that this object moves through every second. So, the next few questions ask, what times does the displacement of the object equal maximum? Well, it will be here and here. At those times, the acceleration of that object will also be at a maximum. So, for C and E, it's the same answer. It would be 1.0 seconds and 3.0 seconds. All right, for D, we'd already gone over why C and E are at the same time in the previous video as well. So, go back to that if you're not sure where that came from. For D, it asks where the velocity is maximum, and in the previous video we showed this as well. Now, you may be asking, well, Mr. Chorman, I want proof. I will show you proof in a little bit when we take the derivatives, okay? When we actually show what the velocity and acceleration functions are. What is the acceleration of the object at three seconds? Well, if we go to three seconds and we take the amplitude, all right, um, at time is equal to three seconds, we go to the graph. And we see all right, that the displacement is equal to negative 0.080 meters. Okay? So we can actually calculate the acceleration. I gave you this one equation before. A is equal to negative omega squared times x. And you may not be sure exactly where that came from. Again, I'll be showing you uh, in a little bit, probably the next video. But here we can calculate the acceleration. All right? And we know the angular frequency is 1.6 radians per second. And that's squared times the displacement here. Okay? And when we do that, we end up with 0 0.20 meters per second squared. And that is positive. Okay? Those negative signs from the displacement and from the equation uh, cancel out. All right? Um, again, just a quick example. Uh, just showing how to calculate these things. For G, right, we ask what is the... Let's see here, the uh, displacement of the object versus time. Well, take a second, look at the graph. Would you use sine or cosine? Well, look at the initial condition. What is the position at the initial condition? If it's zero, then you're going to want your trig function to cause the displacement to be zero. And so you're going to want to use sine. All right? um, therefore, it should take the form that looks like this. And anytime I ask you for the trig function, it's not just asking you for this generalized form, but I want the specific form, in other words, with the amplitude and the angular frequency in it. So here we have 0 0.080 meters times sine, and the omega here is 1.6 radians per second times t. And then there we go, 1.6, there we go. All right, and that is your displacement function. So we can use this displacement function, all right? Remember, you've got to be in radian mode, and at time equals 1.0 seconds, all right, we can check uh, and, and plug this in and find that the displacement is equal to 0 0.080 times sine of 1.6 radians per second times 1.0 seconds. And when you solve for that, you end up with 0 0.080 meters. And at one second, does that match on the graph? Yes, it does. Good. So our displacement function is accurate. All right. We try the second time. Uh, time equals 2.5 seconds. What should your displacement be there? Well, if we go into the middle here and come down, or it should be somewhere over here. I don't know, I would guess negative 0 0.06 meters. Well, when we plug this in, we end up with just that, negative 0 0.061 meters. Now, of course, your, our answers are going to get a little off because I am sticking to safe things. Uh, in terms of the angular frequency, okay? So they're not going to be exact, but you see there, that works out pretty well, okay? All right, the next video is going to talk about the equations of motion uh, for simple harmonic motion in terms of the velocity and acceleration.